let's move on to Drake London, because this is a player that I think was probably the number one wide receiver overall heading into uh, and for the bulk of 2021 before he broke his ankle. Um, it's Drake London out of USC, six foot four, 219 pounds. He's only 20 years old, which, you know, we like in fantasy. We like youth. Yep. Uh, he will be 21 this July. And this is another player who was a standout basketball player in high school and actually played basketball for the Trojans his freshman year before he got hurt and really decided to focus on football. So again, a lot of that in his game, ideal size, length, incredible leaping ability, no surprise, right? Given his background, incredible catch radius, really, really interesting game. I'm a little bit worried about his durability. I'll be honest. Like, I feel like this is a guy who we say, oh, if he was healthy, if he was healthy, and maybe it's not a big deal, but I'm a little bit trepidatious to begin with. Yeah, it's fair to to wonder that because he didn't work out at the combine. He wasn't able to work out at USC's first pro day. So, you know, some concern about an injury that happened, what, in November off the top of my head, you know. So here we are in April and, you know, we don't have a really full, you know, both medical and athletic profile on him. Those are two big concerns because I think some people are asking can he separate? Can is he going to be able to to run some of the vertical routes that he did in, in college? Those are fair questions. The injury concern as well, you know, especially if you're a bigger guy and, and people tend to play more physical with those type of players. They sometimes they feel they have to. So yeah, that's a that's a fair concern. Um, how are you? How are you comping him? Yeah, I he reminds me a little bit of Cortland Sutton. You know, the 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 box out jump balls. You know, I mean that that's kind of the you know, uh, the, the player that, that he most reminds me of. I know you've mentioned him as well as, as a, as a mm-hmm. comp, you know, some people have said, you know, Michael Pittman, Mike Evans. Mike Evans, good call. Yep. I mean, those are, those are similar play styles. The thing about Evans is that, I mean, as London isn't even 21 years old yet, there's still some in the league, who, some scouts who believe that he could grow an inch, that he could be able to pack on another 15, 20 pounds and and not really lose his running ability. So, you know, you start getting up into that 6'5 range and what Evans was. I mean, Evans is, is a different breed. There really aren't any Mike Evans just in the league not named right. Mike Evans. So I don't want to go quite there. But, you know, if you told me in three years that he's playing on that level, it wouldn't completely stun me either. That's good to know. And I love that intel because part of the reason I shied away from the Evans comp was because Evans is just so strong. Yes. He's just so um, immovable, you know? And so yep. his athleticism is paired with physicality. And it is a different thing to see a 20-year-old kind of skinny kid trying to be physical and imagining and imagining that at the next level. Yep. So, uh, But I do think when we talk about his potential or his contested catches, we also have to talk about how bad the quarterback play was right. for the Trojans and how he was still able to be so incredibly productive at USC. He also uh, earned a PFF grade of 91.8. Uh, for a receiving grade, which Sounds you know, high. all yeah. of that speaks. Yeah. All of that speaks to his um, ability to ascend regardless of the things around him. If yeah. You like in fantasy. Yeah. Three years in college. I think he only played, I want to say 27 or eight games total. Uh, you know, when you factor in shortened 2020 season injury last year, I think he played with seven or eight different starting quarterbacks, you know, which is crazy at a place like USC, you know, even where, you know, in the past, you know, they'd graduate guys and the next stud would come in. It really wasn't a case like that. One of them was Jackson Dart last year, a freshman, you know, it, it, considering all those things for him to be able to catch a hundred and, you know, 50 plus balls in, in, you know, 27 or eight games, the volume is there. I mean, he was averaging 11 catches a game last year. He was, in a lot of ways, their offense, and he used those basketball skills to to get open, you know, fend guys off. He can get a little aggressive with the uh, the downfield contact, you know, extending his arms and, you know, not really being too shy about it. I wish he was a little more subtle, but that's, you know, with a kid who's I like it. It a kid. not 21. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah. With, with the right coaching, he'll be fine. I think we're all imagining that he is going to have to leave Southern California for the first time in his life yeah. and head across the country to New York because the Jets are going to select him. I've I've made that pairing before. It makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, yeah, you have, you know, the the physical and, and tough Corey Davis. You have Elijah Moore as well. You know, you don't really know what you have at tight end there. Um, they can throw to their backs, Michael Carter and guys like that. But I would love to see one more 
big play receiver for Zach Wilson, who, you know, through, I would say with a lot less confidence last year uh, than, than some people expected. And, and some of these hero balls certainly didn't work out, but that's a guy who can bail you out, especially a, a kind of a, you know, ragtag uh, backyard style quarterback, right? That's the kind of player where, you know, all you have to do is get it in the zip code and he, and he could probably find it. Well, he dragged these goofballs in Southern California into production. I mean, he was a Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year in 2021, yeah. even though he broke his ankle on, uh, what, Halloween? The right. day before Halloween? Yep. Um, so I, I think you're right. From a fantasy projection point of view, you mentioned it. Corey Davis, Braxton Berrios, Elijah Moore. I love Elijah Moore, but very different style player. Mm -hmm. And then they add these two tight ends clearly to help um, to help fix, let's be honest, Zach Wilson and give him some red zone options between CJ Uzoma and Tyler Conklin. So I'm looking at London as a touchdown producer, you know, also given his contested catchability That's and right. how he can kind of drag Wilson into productivity in the red area, become a, a weapon for him in the red area. What would you take? Let's say it all happens. Jets over under seven and a half touchdowns. As a jet. I think he had eight in eight games last year, right? So that that for an offense that was inconsistent, right? I mean, they were they were not, you know, a good game in, game out. But yeah, I mean, I would I would think that number is, is pretty fair in a 17 uh, game season. I mean, that, that makes a ton of sense. Uh, yeah, I also thought the Eagles could make sense. I mean, I think, you know, pairing him with Devontae Smith would be really nice and it would certainly yeah. work. A couple deep threats Balance too. things out. Yeah. yeah, right. Get a little variety of all kinds of different guys. And yeah, I mean, I, I can see both of those being sort of quality touchdown locations where, where, you know, he's not averaging 11 catches a game next year, but in the right role, he absolutely could provide big fantasy value in that regard.